Mr. Speaker, um, I rise today on behalf of these uh, Nicaraguan pastors, ministry leaders of Mountain Gateway who were unable to speak for themselves. I want to uh, say thank my colleague from Alabama for uh, taking this uh, time of special order to uh, discuss uh, this issue, to bring it to the attention of the American people and really to the world. And uh, he has been uh, a great champion on this and uh, there's many members uh, of our delegation in Alabama and really across the country that uh, are very concerned about what we have heard going on uh, in Nicaragua and, and the situation down there. And uh, unfortunately, so many of the American people uh, are very unaware of what the situation is just uh, a few uh, hundred miles south of our border uh, here in the United States of America. These leaders uh, ha that has been already mentioned, but it, it should be uh, repeated. These leaders have been convicted by the Nicaraguan government on sham charges. They now face up to 15 years in prison and $80 million in fines each. The rest came after these courageous pastors led a series of revivals that was authorized by the Nicaraguan government. And they were rounded up, they're imprisoned shortly after a mass outpouring of faith in the capital city. Mr. Speaker, it was an act of religious, it is an act of religious persecution that put these men and women in prison, these pastors, these, these leaders, these spiritual leaders, these ministry leaders. And it is human right violations that have kept them in prison. And again, I am uh, so thankful that we live in a country where we do not have to worry about going to prison. I think so many Americans take it for granted that all the many freedoms that we have in this country, one of those main freedoms that we have is that we get to worship freely. And we can uh, worship freely, whether it be at an outdoor revival, whether it be in a large event, small event, or just being at home reading our Bible, we don't have to worry about uh, being sentenced to 15 years in prison. And just as myself, as a, as a young boy who accepted Christ in my own life, uh, I can now be in Congress and I can be a citizen here in this United States and not worry about uh, the threat of prison being hung over my head. And uh, whether it's to go to an outdoor revival uh, program that uh, was such as happened in Nicaragua, or whether it's to simply go to a, a small church service, or whether it is to go to just simply be at home with some other Christians re sitting around reading or praying the Bible together. So uh, on this uh, time of, the, of when we're reflecting on what is going on here, I just want to encourage the American people to uh, reach out to their uh, members of Congress and to encourage them to, uh, to do what they can to stand with those of us who are trying to call attention to this very serious issue. And this not only goes on Nicaragua, but also goes on in many other parts of the world as well. But today, we certainly want to call attention to the, those pastors and ministry leaders from Mountain Gateway who are unable to speak for themselves and be a voice here in the United States House of Representatives. And uh, we uh, ask for their release. And I would call on the Nicaraguan government to take action to address these uh, uh, indisputable violations and to free these men and women so that they can be returned to their homes and with their families. And with that, I yield back.